Hi, I'm Sandy Alnock, author of Bible Journaling Made Simple, and on page 70 of the book, there's this beautiful page with all these planets on it, and there's a little thing at the bottom that says web content available. And if you see that anywhere in the book, you can scroll around on the website and find either a sketch for it or a tutorial for it. And this is the tutorial for that particular page. And I'm going to be using to the Lord your God belong the heavens, even the highest heavens, the earth and everything in it from Deuteronomy. In the, the book, the page that I use is Genesis 1. And if your Bible has an open page on the opposite side of Genesis 1, that would be a great place to work your, your paints as well. And you can do this with watercolors, with watercolor pencils, with regular pencils, lots of fun ways to do it. Very simple tools that I'm using, you'll notice, to make a bunch of circles. I'm doing a different layout than is shown in the book, but the technique will be basically the same. And I'm just making circles all over my page, and then I'm going to put some copier paper underneath. It's just regular printer paper, nice and thin. I use this when I'm doing my watercoloring to protect the paint from rolling down the sides of the Bible and that sort of thing. I'm using some Daniel Smith watercolors. These are my favorite watercolors to use. They are light fast, which means they're not going to fade over time where others will. They don't get that kind of chalky sort of feel to them that some other paints do. And I also don't use them with any page prep. Notice there is no page prep on this page at all. I'm just using my paints directly on it and the paint does not bleed through. Some brands do and I recommend that you test things out. What I'm doing is taking some paint and just dabbing it into one of the circles and I am not stressing out about the outlines and trying to stay within the pencil lines or anything. I'm using some leftover paint from a previous project and I'm just going to put a bunch of really fun colors on here to make an entire universe of planets. And so I'll do that the same kind of a thing with different colors and placing them on here in all, all sorts of fun and random fashion. You can mix colors on there if you want to. Use a planet, make a planet that's half green, half blue. Use your favorite colors. Use colors that the Holy Spirit inspires you to when you read whatever verse it is. One of the things in the book that I have is lots of techniques that can be used with many Bible verses. Because even though it's fine to say, here, I'm going to teach you how to paint a, the tail of a whale, there's really only one place, I guess maybe two places, that you could put a whale. I suppose you might be creative and find a different place, but everybody would turn to Jonah. I try to focus on techniques, both on this channel and in the book, that you can use with a multiplicity of verses because I want you to hear from the Lord and journal the verses he's telling you to journal. If you just come to my channel and you say, I wanna make that exact page and you turn to what I have been spoken to by the Lord, it's not going to help you in your journey other than what you learn from me. I want you to hear from the Lord for, for yourself and understand what he's saying. But I also understand that following tutorials is helpful. So here you can use any verses about God being the creator of the universe and make beautiful planets like this. You can do them just down the, the column in the side if you're not one who does things all over the page. I love doing things all over the page because that's how I roll. But if you're one who just wants to stay in the margins, you can do that. If you have a interleaved Bible that has a blank page in between all the other pages, you can do a full page that way. You can get out an art journal. You can do this in a hymnal many, many ways that you can do your Bible journaling without doing exactly what I do, but you can still use the technique in some way to create something else. Now, the baby wipe technique that I'm using here when I'm just kind of moving the color around with it is not going to work on a lot of watercolor paper. It'll work a little bit, but it works really well on Bible paper because Bible paper is a little bit slick. So I can actually do my painting primarily with a baby wipe not necessarily having to do it with a brush all the time. The baby wipe puts down less water. So I don't totally sop my page because when you sop your page, you end up with a really wet page. So I ironed it. I just had a piece of paper underneath and on top of it and ironed it nice and flat. It's never going to get back to 100%, but it'll get pretty close. And now I've got some 
Inktense watercolor pencils. You can use any kind of watercolor pencils and go over a few select edges. And that's up to you how much sharpness you want on each of your different kinds of areas. And I recommend not trying to be perfect. Just there's some places where the baby wipe may have splooged a little bit and you want to make a certain area a little bit sharper than another area so that it really reads more as planets. And if it's watercolor pencil, then you can go over it again and soften things with that baby wipe and just move that color around. If you use regular pencils, you can't move that color around with the baby wipe, but you can still do the same kind of an effect. So don't go out buying watercolor pencils just so you can do this technique. Even though watercolor pencils are fun to play with, they're kind of a halfway step between watercolor and pencil. So if you want to do watercolor, but you really only feel comfortable with a pencil, it's a great way to apply the color and then you can move it around with a brush or with a baby wipe without having to feel like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to control a brush. But there we go. That's with one layer of all the colors on here. And I decided to write my scripture verse down the side. And I'm using a micron pen to do that. Micron pens don't bleed, at least not much. They get a little ghosting sometimes if you use a big fat one. But for the most part, they work really well. And that's my go-to pen, that and a white pen, a white gel pen for doing lettering. After I finish, I'm erasing the pencil lines because I always like to write my words out if I can. If I'm doing it on watercolor or watercolor pencil, I can erase pencil lines. Now this is the page that was in the book, the, the actual physical page. And you can see I got some really cool and interesting textures and had some two tones going on in some of the planets. So I thought I'd show you a little more of how I created that in comparison to what I just painted in this tutorial because depending on the kinds of paints you have and the colors you choose, you can get something very different. Here's what happened with the way that I just did it. And I'm going to increase the color on this. So for people who really like strong color, you can layer the colors on top of each other. So I'm just going to put a second layer on top of the paint I already have. And I'm going to stop short of some of those edges. So I get almost that little glowing edge. And what I'm doing here is taking my baby wipe and I'm dipping it into the paint. I'm mixing the paint off camera there so I don't have room on camera for everything. Just dipping it into a puddle of paint. You can mix your puddle of paint so it's really thick and has lots of paint and just a little water. Or you can mix it a little thinner. And one of the cool things about good watercolors like this is that if I end up getting too dark in some particular area, I can lighten it. I can take a clean baby wipe and go back into one of these areas and wipe it off even if it's already dried. I can still lift up a little bit of that color because I like to make sure I can still read the scriptures. So I'm real careful about that, but it does mean that sometimes I'll need to go back and clear up an area a little bit. And I really worry about it just on the words that I'm going to try to read. I did try to make sure that those sections are clear, but I let all the other color be nice and rich elsewhere. So here I painted on some dark purple and note that all of the colors and when you use watercolors, it's generally going to dry about 30% lighter than the way it goes on. So it's really up to you how heavy you want that color to be. So there we go. A second layer of color really increases the contrast and everything and makes it a lot punchier of an image. So there you go. Hope that was an enjoyable video for you and that you learned something from it. And keep an eye out in the book for things that say web content available. If it's not already available on the website or here on YouTube, then it will be soon. So you guys take care and I will see you again next week for another of my weekly Sunday videos. God bless you. Bye-bye.